There are people in this audience today. Now, I'm not going to embarrass you by asking you to raise your hand. There are people in this audience today that have never been spanked by their parents. They've never been reprimanded by their parents. They've never got in a schoolyard fight. They wouldn't say shit if it was in their fucking mouth. And you wonder why the country, the world's so fucked up. I can see. And that's why I call you snowflakes. Because you melt under fucking pressure. I can eat you ten at a time in this fucking room. And the guys that are six pack, four percent body fat, pill poppers, I can take twenty at a time. I'm six foot one, two twenty five, a twisted steel and motherfucking panther piss. And I'm still this at seventy three. When I was 33, I killed the whole room. Now, see, if you're trained as a kid like this, you have no fear. You have no fear. People say, why am I fearless? Well, I'm going to show you one of the reasons. Because that's me when I'm 13 years old with Jackie the Lion. My dad exposed me to a lot of rough shit growing up. Because he wanted me to have a pair. My mother's off camera here on the left in hysterics, screaming and yelling, because the lion had just put my head in his mouth. That's the MGM line, though, you know, the one on the beginning of MGM. I've been doing stuff like this since I'm a little kid. Once you become fearless, life becomes limitless. I'm not going to ask you. One of the homework assignments we have, it's online, is what are you afraid of? Some of you have a longer list of what you're not afraid of than what you're afraid of. Why? Because you saw what your parents were afraid of. You saw what your grandparents were afraid of. You saw what your older brother was afraid of, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. American symbols of manhood. My dad's generation and your generation. What the f***? <laughs> men back in the days and men today. It's a sad f commentary. I think the reason why the Martians or whoever is out there hasn't come because we're not worth the shit. Why bother with us? Now, this is a real slide from one of my mentees from Paris. He's so ashamed of being a snowflake and being raised by snowflakes. They have a society in Paris. They go once a month and they beat each other like this. That's a real slide. Many in this room should have been beaten like this. A lot of you are ashamed in this room about being a snowflake. You laugh about it. But laughing is a coping mechanism. You don't like being, you know, you, you don't like having a dry weenie. And you don't like being a cunt. You know it. Jason has to be, is one of the best at what he does. And if you notice the picture in that slide, it's JC. If, if love got the job done, most parents would have produced high performers. It doesn't. That was uh, JC at the uh, Castle Seminar a couple years ago when I told him, get rid of the f***ing earrings and all this other bullshit. <laughs> now, if you think that you're going to blend into society looking like a freak, whatever you're taking, if it's not, if it's, if it's not addictive, give me some of this shit. I mean, so, so I can hallucinate as well. Life expands and contracts with courage through pain. Being successful at anything. For those of you that played sports in high school or college or whatever, you know the better trained teams normally won. Best prepared teams normally won. How do you get prepared to practice, sweat, etc., right? Life, business, being an entrepreneur is no different. You've got to practice being successful. 
I went over this seminar. I could give this seminar in a motherfucking coma. I went over, for, for every minute that I'm up here, I practice 10 minutes. And I'm a world-class speaker. Can you say the same? When was the last time you practiced being successful? If ever. Now, part of the reason that I am who I am is because of this man, my dad. He's not a movie star. But uh, he was a rough mother. He had a 56-inch chest. 28-inch waist and 18-inch arms, and he never lifted weights a day in his life. I'm going to say that again for you uh, pumpers. 56-inch <laughs> chest, 28-inch waist, 18-inch arms. He was a gymnast. He was the uh, first alternate 1936 Olympics on the pummel horse in rings. When my dad says, stand there and don't move, short of a tsunami knocking me down, I didn't move. When he said, when my mother said, I want you to do such and such, and I said, no, I'm not going to do that. And I said, well, I guess I'm going to have to wait and tell your dad when he gets, oh. No, we don't have to get dad involved. <laughs> what, exactly, mom, what did you want me to do again? What was it? Uh, and so, uh, and that's how, unfortunately, kids, fear works. It's a shitty thing to say, but mother fear works. Mao Zedong proved it. Hitler proved it. Stalin proved it. And I can go down the line. The, uh, uh, Genghis Khan, I mean, fear f***ing works. He was not a great dad, but he was an extraordinary man's man, which most of you in this room can't say about your dad. Most people come to me because they got daddy issues, either on the surface or, as the psychiatrists say, sub rosa. What that means is you had no role model father. I'm the alpha male dad you never had. And believe me, I don't need any more kids. That's a sad commentary that you've got to come and listen to a psychopath guy in his 70s who's made a shit ton of money because you didn't have a dad that disciplined you. You didn't have a dad that was a good role model. That's sad. I'm indebted to my father for living. I just figured out what these things are here. I'm indebted to my, fa my father for living, but to my teacher for living well. Alexander the Great, that teacher was his mentor. We are shackled by our dad's sins. When one has not had a good father, one must create one. Nietzsche. Children begin by loving their parents. After a time, they judge them. Rarely, if ever, do they forgive them. This is not new shit, but nobody's teaching it, are they? I have no f***ing book. I have nothing. I don't want your f***ing money. I haven't had to work in 35 years. But I still have more fire and passion than probably anybody in the room. It is easier to build strong children than repair a broken man. One of my brothers there, Frederick Douglass. Sigmund Freud said it best, being entirely honest with oneself is a good exercise. We are never so defenseless against suffering as when we love. I cannot think of any need a child, uh, in childhood as strong as the need for father's protection. And for those of you that were raised just by a mom, i.e. you didn't have it. And I.E., where are you? My father didn't have a father. His dad died a few months before he was born. So my dad served in two wars, Second World War and Korean War, and he raised me like the military. I.E., then I volunteered. I saw my dad volunteer twice, so I volunteered during Vietnam. You do well, not what your parents tell you to do. You do what you see them do. I worked still so many, I used to work 100, 120 hours a week. I saw my dad never take a day off in 28 years. Just think if your kids are patterning themselves after you, what a sorry bunch of shit that's going to be.